Okay, so my last video got interrupted, but at the perfect time. So let's keep talking about our uh, angles in standard position. Now we're ready to try some problems. Okay, positive x, negative x, positive y, negative y. So say I said, I'm going to give you an angle in standard position. And I want you to draw it in standard position and tell me what the reference angle is. Okay? So here's the angle I want you to draw in standard position and tell me what the reference angle is. So how would I approach this angle? Well, first I'd look at the sign. In this case, it's positive. It's, there is no sign, so we know it's a positive 120, which automatically tells me that we are moving, that's right, we're moving counterclockwise. If the angle was negative, I know I'd be moving clockwise. So, my starting position for all angles in standard position is my positive x-axis. This arm right here, that's my starting position. So if I'm going 120 degrees, and I know that each quadrant is 90 degrees, well I know that this is going to be positive 90, positive 180 is 90 plus 180, 180 plus 90 is positive 270, and then 270 plus 90 is positive 360. So I would say, okay, so I'm going 120 degrees. Well, I know that this takes me to 90, and then 90 to here is 180. So I am 120, I'm between 90 and 180, so I know that I'm going to be in this quadrant. And the quadrants have a name. This is quadrant, well quadrant, this is quadrant one here. This, this guy right here, this is quadrant one. Okay, so quadrant one is from zero to, to 90, zero to 90 degrees. Zero to 90 degrees. Quadrant two, is 90 to 180 degrees. Quadrant 3 is 180 to 270. And quadrant 4 is 270 to 360 degrees. Degrees, degrees. But that was just dealing with our positive angles. These the quadrants also have their negative. Uh, counterpoints. So quadrant four is also zero to negative 90 degrees. Zero to negative 90. It's negative 90 to negative 180. Right? Negative 90, negative 180. And then negative 180 plus 90 is so negative 270 or minus 90. And then negative both of these are zero as well. So that's the quadrants. So coming back to this angle of positive 120, I know that I'm going to be in quadrant two, because this is what quadrant two has. I know that 120 is 30 more than 90 degrees. So I can make an angle with this axis that's 30 more degrees. So I start at zero and I count out 30 degrees. If I go out there. So that's going to be where I draw my angle, and I'm going to draw it from the origin. And I'm just going to draw my coterminal angle, or sorry, my terminal arm. And so this whole thing I know is 120 degrees, this whole angle here. So then my reference angle for this guy, my reference angle would be the angle to the closest point on the x-axis, which is this x-axis here. This, this would be too much. So this is going to be my reference angle for this guy. And my reference angle will be 180 minus 120, really, right? So it's 60 degrees. It's 180. 180 to this, this point's 120. Well, what's, what's the difference? 120, 180, the difference is going to be 60. So that's my reference angle. And then my coterminal angle is the angle if I go the opposite direction. So if I go the opposite direction, then I'm going to go negative 90, 
negative 180, and then negative 180 with another negative 60, it's going to be negative 240 degrees on this end. So these are coterminal angles. They share the same terminal arm, but they get there in a different way. So one is moving in positive angle directions, and the other is moving negative. And that is angles in standard position. Let's try one more here, okay, just for practice. What would, so let's try a negative starting angle here. And let's make it, yeah, let's do that. Okay. So let's try an angle of, let's try negative 300, okay? Let's say I have a negative 300 angle, negative 300 degrees. Well, that negative automatically tells me that I'm going to be moving in the clockwise direction, the negative direction. So I start, I start counting. I start counting from here. So I go negative 90 degrees, negative 180 degrees, negative 270 degrees. And I know that I'm gonna land in here because this is, oh, I never put this one up. This is negative 270 to negative 360. To negative 360. So I knew automatically it was gonna be in this quadrant, quadrant one. So I go negative 270. 270 to 300 is 30 degrees. So I know that from this arm, I'm gonna to have to move another 30 degrees. And I can use my protractor to make that measurement. So I go on there with my protractor, I go to the middle, I measure a 1, 2, 30 degrees, and it's putting me about there, okay? So then I measure that out, there's my terminal arm, and I know that going all the way to that is negative 300 degrees. Now, I look, because I want to do my reference angle. Now, I, I know my reference angle is going to be the angle that gets, me the, that gets me to the closest x-axis. In this case, this is the closest x-axis here. So my reference angle is going to be this angle right here, and it's simply 360 minus 300. So it's, and reference angles are always positive. Reference angles are always positive. So in this case, it's positive 60 degrees. This angle is 60 degrees. One second. Um, so, that means that the only other thing I can figure out here is my coterminal angle. So because I was going clockwise negative, my coterminal is going to go in the opposite direction. And we've actually already figured that out, technically. So if I go this direction and hit this guy, well, I've gone 60 degrees. So my coterminal is positive 60 degrees. Sometimes our reference angles and our coterminal angles, or our angles in standard position, are the same thing. That is all you need to know. We've done reference angles, coterminals, and angles in standard position. We have quadrant one, two, three, and four. And just to finish, quadrant two is also negative 180 to negative 270 degrees. Okay? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start using this and knowing that these coterminal, oh, sorry, these terminal, uh, terminal uh, lines occur around a unit circle, well, we're going to start creating triangles out of these terminal arms, okay? And the triangles are going to have uh, an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, and we're going to figure out how to figure out what those coordinates are. Okay, thanks.